a lot of videos on this channel and well other channels as well use Google Colab. I'm updating this video just to show you some of the general techniques that I like to use for Google Colab. I'm going to skip the basics of, yeah, you can run Python in it and you can run neural networks in it. You can do that locally on your own computer. I'm going to talk about how you deal with this in the cloud, how you get files in and out of it, when you should process files on its local disk versus G drive, and some other just general tips. Just a quick video, show you how I use Colab. This notebook should be linked in the description. You can get right to it. First of all, I'm just curious, how many of you feel like you can completely get by with Google Colab, don't particularly need a local GPU or even to use in the cloud? Definitely let me know in the comments. I'm just curious to see how people are using Google Colab. You'll notice on many of the examples that I have on my GitHub repository, I have this open in Colab badge here. We'll take a look at how I add that in a moment. But you want to click that. That takes you from GitHub to Colab. And here we are. We have it. To add the little badge, you just want to add this bit of code here. You can find it at the top of any Jupyter Notebook that has this. You just need to embed your account and the actual file that you're putting in there. It's completely secure. It's just my account name. Everybody knows what that is anyway. So first of all, in Colab, you want to find out if you have the GPU enabled or not. I don't particularly need GPU for this, so I'm going to leave it disabled. Runtime standard or high RAM, that's only if you're using Google Colab Pro, which does cost you, I think, around $9.99 a month. That's the main difference. You get the RAM, and also it doesn't time you out as quickly. We'll get to timeouts in a second. You can also launch a terminal, which is kind of nice in Colab Pro. So you can run your Unix commands directly. Not a necessity, but can be nice for some things that you will be doing. Now, obviously, you can run Python code. I could do a whole tutorial on this, but this is no different than running Colab on your local computer. You'll see that if you run it, it has a lot of the libraries already installed. This is a blessing and a curse. The way that it's a curse is Google will update these and change these on the fly without you necessarily even knowing, and suddenly code just doesn't work. The blessing is you don't have to manage these and install them for yourself. So here you can see I'm just showing you that TensorFlow and PyTorch are both completely available here. Say you want something like Ninja that is not installed by default. I need to use that sometimes when I use StyleGAN2. We'll get more into that in other videos. But it's not installed by default, so you just run exclamation point pip install. Exclamation point means run it in a terminal-like environment. Run it on the Unix command system. You could also pop open the terminal if you have Pro and run that as well. But I'm going to go ahead and just click pip install ninja. And a lot of the videos that I put together, you'll just see a section at the top where I'm installing the needed software. This is the stuff that really tends to break as Google updates things. That's where at least half of the issues that I see in my GitHub repositories come from, is people just telling me about things that Google has ever so kindly broken for me. You can run Unix commands. This is just showing the disk free. This is also useful because it shows you how much space you have. You're going to be putting your data inside of a location called content, or if you map your G drive, it'll come from there. You can see here on the root file system, there is 188 gigabytes available. So there's a lot of space. Now this is possibly different if you're not using Pro. I've seen them typically be the same, and this, this will change based on, I guess, how much space Google has available. They possibly ration that. This space, is dynamic. It goes away. If you go out of Colab for a day and you come back, anything you put there is gone. That is the problem with it. The good part about it is it's fast. It's local disk storage. So if you're mounting your G drive, which is the other way that you can get files in and out of here, G drive is slow. So if you're accessing that data a lot on G drive, then you might want to temporarily use data and content. One thing that I've done often in this is I will copy all of the data that I need for my G drive 
over to content, realizing that as soon as my environment goes away, I'm going to have to redo that. But for a couple of hours, it's there and it's high speed. So that's one tip that I definitely like to mention on this. All of your data should be kept in content. And again, this will go away. Here I'm looking at sample data. I often delete that directory because I don't particularly need it. So I will tend to generate lots of files to here. So an example, very often my neural networks are doing things that are going to go into video. And the way I will often do this is I will generate a whole bunch of frames. And then I'll take those frames using something called FFmpeg, crunch it all down to a MP4 video and download that. All those frames, I don't need to keep those because the video is what I wanted. So I will often use this as high speed temporary area, then either directly download to my disk or copy to G Drive the final output, which in this case is a video file. Now, if you want to upload and download files, to content, so to the local drive of your environment that you're running here, you can use this code. This will upload something to it. So I click this, you have to choose your file, and I'm just going to pick something random but small. I have all these video files I created. They're big. So it's uploading that CSV file that I had there. You can see I uploaded content blocks labels. It's there. I can also download them. I could download that same file, but you put the path that you want in there. I'm going to download the MD file from the sample. This takes sometimes longer if you, if you want to download something. I recommend zipping things if you've got a bunch of files that you want to download. Just do exclamation point in the zip command to zip them up into a single file and bring it down. Or you can send that file over to G Drive as well. Now, G Drive, if you want to access that, what you need to do is run this code. It gives you this link to your G Drive. I'm going to go ahead and use this one. Copy that, paste that into here, press enter, and you will be mounted. That authentication code, that's not particularly secure, so I usually don't clip it from the videos. And now I can see my drive mounted there. If I listed into my drive, I can start to see the files on my Google Drive. So I typically do a combination of this. I will use upload and download. If I'm just going to be putting some files together, running a video, and I don't need it to go move on to G Drive, but if it's something where I'm training GANs and I have a whole bunch of images, I don't want to constantly be re-uploading those images to G Drive. So I will put them up in G Drive, possibly as a zip file, just so that I can pull it across as one thing, pull that across, put it into content so that it's locally available, and then access it. So I really use all of these together. If I am going to be changing something a lot, I'll store it to G Drive just so that I don't have to constantly be re-pulling this. If you've worked with AWS, think of the G Drive like your S3. Actually, perhaps a little more like EFS because you can actually mount it. Although you can mount S3, you can mount almost anything if you go through the right drivers. Last thing I'll mention is preventing timeouts. Pro, I found, is a lot better about this. It typically will not time you out if you run it for 12 hours straight. You're going to get a lot less time if you don't have Pro. But this JavaScript, you can basically put that into your console for JavaScript. There's a little more information on it here that I have linked. This is where I got the code. You do Control shift i to get your console up. And then you go to Console, and you copy this and run it. And now there's a little clicker going that will prevent this from timing out. So I use that a lot. This is probably the biggest thing that pushes me to using cloud over Colab. If I need to train something like crazy, like GANs, and I just want it to run for a couple of days, it's just painful to have to figure out, okay, where is my checkpoint going to occur in that 12-hour span? I always end up wasting like the last two or three hours of it and then having to manually restart that. I know there's ways that you can automate that to some degree, but you are really operating 
outside of what Google wants you to do. And it seems like they take steps frequently to defeat that. You need to pretty much do that manually, restart it at the end of 12 hours. These are some of the tips that I find useful. There. Do you have some of your own that I didn't cover? Let me know in the comments. I'm always curious to... Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to see other technologies using Colab, what you learned in this video, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And give this video a like if it was helpful to you. Thank you very much.